All right, so we have a quick uh, meeting with Aditya uh, about the debate. Would you call it a club or summer event? Yeah, uh, summer camp, yeah. And and some notion of us creating a debate uh, group. It would go beyond that event, I think. We want to think beyond it a little bit when we build these. But just to think about building thinking partners that would guide you through the process. Does that sound fair? And then I just yeah. asked Aditya what he's thinking about. Uh, so what I'm thinking about right at this minute is, first off, I was looking at the guidelines for next year, what is and isn't allowed by uh, the governing body for uh, like the National Debate League. Mm -hmm. And thinking about that, some partners are not going to be permitted by them because of the way they want you to cite sources and uh, the amount of, and the way the debate works in high school is that I'm, I think certain partners like the debate research partner, I wouldn't be allowed to use that partner because I wouldn't be able to take any data from that. Um, what if you could? I so, mean, so Aditya, I'm happy to see this as a problem. I want you to hold off on, it's okay if you want to yeah. cast it out already, but it's a good problem. So explain what the, explain, do you want to say more about other things too before you explain that one or? Yeah, I think the first thing is that right now all of the, the, the partners are on now comment. So first things yeah, first. We can, we can move that over. I mean, getting on that on, uh, mm -hmm. on writing partners and mm -hmm. all that, getting all that set up first. And then I want to like refine it a little bit. Like I feel like right now I there definitely could be a little, Right now, my models are my partners are how you say bare bones. Yep. So yep. Okay. Maybe you want to add a little more, expand a bit, to mm -hmm. maybe get to refine the uh, res, the output uh, to a little more where we where we want it to be. So then we obviously so we obviously want to get all that set up. Let me just make sure that I'm actually like part of the group on writing partners. Yeah, you are, with your email address, your Gmail address. So yeah. can you send me at some point a list of the ones I can go on as you on now comment and see what you have there, but can you send me a list of the ones that you want to be sure to bring over? Yeah, I think I can, I can copy and paste them, but you know, not a yeah. problem. Yeah. Okay. The main ones that I'd want on there, the, the one mm -hmm. that we already have all down there, the uh, argument creation partners top of the list, then I'd say, uh, definitely, uh, the what's it called the um, the side switch that would definitely be the second one, mm -hmm. and then the, the last one. Uh, I need to do some. I don't think that one would be as useful. Uh, it would be that would be the one I have on now comment right now. The R. Um, what's it called? Christina. Hi. Aditya dropped in right away as um, he and he has to leave. Uh, yep. In no 15 problem. minutes or so. He's on vacation. Um, and he's starting the debate uh, summer camp at his high school next week. And we're trying to set up a debate group for him. So we're okay. talking. We're going to talk kind of briefly about that. Yep. No problem. So argument creates creator side switcher and then what were you gonna say next? Hi David. Hi there. So I think the AERI partner would definitely what be useful. The only problem is that we're not allowed to exactly have we can't create our own argument, so I need to severely modify that partner so that every single uh, so that when I put when I put in my um, uh, my so instead of using the the evidence and reason, the evidence that has already been created by another uh, partner, I would need to put in my own evidence if I want to, or I have to like change the partner up significantly. If what I want does to, AERI stand for? Uh, I think it was an acronym I came up: Assertion, Evidence, Reasoning, Reasoning, Impact. So basically, the purpose of that one was to find. You came up with this. Uh, uh, I think it's based on a different acronym, but I, I think I copied the acronym down wrong. 
So I think like <laughs> something slightly different. <laughs> okay. Officially. So it's for you. It's uh, um, say it again. It, so I it's assertion, which is like the argument assertion. you're making. Yeah. Evidence, uh -huh. reasoning, and impact. So basically, okay. that whole thing is that the assertion, evidence, reasoning has already been created by different partners. So basically, this partner is just specifically to create to find the impact for each argument. So I could probably modify that slightly just to find the impact and then piece everything together separately. How's it created by other partners? What do you mean? So like you can see if we go to, to my old, so to uh, the now comment group that I used, let's, yeah. let's take the one I had for April. Mm -hmm. I can actually share my screen. Okay. Good. Hi, David. Um, Aditya got here early and has to leave early. He's up in uh, the Adirondacks with his family. And he's starting oh, nice. debate camp next week. So we're oh, my gosh. trying to set up his debate group. Got it. Um, okay. And we're trying to figure out what to move from now comment to writing partners. Oh, I see. Um, so this is the... We're trying to figure out this one. Yeah, so this is the first, this is kind of how my workflow worked before when I was in now comment. It was I'd put in the topic, uh -huh. I'd put in the topic right here, and then the okay. first partner, the one, the only one I've imported to uh, writing partner so far, the creation argument creation partner, would create these arguments, these five arguments. Okay. And then, oh, one sec. Actually, this is a bad example to do it with because my friends kind of messed it up. Uh, it's okay though. Don't worry about it. Keep going with this one. Yeah, uh, this one would be a slightly better example. Okay. So okay. you put in the uh, the topic, then you put in you put it in the debate uh, argument creation partner, and then it gives you five, four to five different arguments that you can use, some kind of starting points. Mm -hmm. And originally what I did is I'd use this debate research teammate to kind of take each argument, each of the individual four to five arguments, and then find four to five supports to each argument. This is the part where it's like a little dicey as to whether or not I'm going to be allowed to use that in the future. Okay. Then it would take the uh, assertion and the ev evidence. So basically it would take the, uh, the, the assertion is the first part up here, the different arguments. The evidence would be anything that's created over here. And then it would come up with reasoning and impact. So the impact is kind of like how this affects the world. Why does this actually matter? Which after the first year or so in debate, I like the first few debates, I realized that's an area where we were severely lacking. It was an area where the judge was kind of having to give points to the other team because they were able to demonstrate how their arguments would impact everyone, impact the environment, impact human society. And we and for our arguments it was more of a figure it out yourself. So this is gonna make this was to make it really clear to the judge that this is a this is the impact of our, each of our arguments. This is how they matter on a global scale. Okay, so slow down a second. When, when I asked you um, how the AERI um, thinking partner uses the other ones, this is what you mean. That it's yeah, a I mean that it, 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 instead of putting my own arguments in, in evidence for it to create the impact from, it just takes what everybody, what the other uh, partners have created, and uses that as the basis for the arguments and uh, evidence. So I have just a complete ready argument that I can add additional evidence to, or just leave as is. If it's a very okay. fairly logical argument rather than one that's based in evidence and statistics. Okay. And that's how that partner would work. So the, the you, thing was, I would because I'm not allowed to make use AI to make. Yeah, let's AI. let's slow down and think about this together. Tell, tell me first, or tell us first, us first, um, what are the guidelines that you're concerned about? So this is based off what I was able to find online, and also I was able to chat with some other people already on the debate team. I have some friends of some friends. Mm -hmm. um, and they all said that AI to create this kind of whole section here isn't really allowed. So the process they use up at the high school is called card cutting where you directly quote from a website and explain how that ties back to your argument, which we aren't directly quoting from websites when we create this partner here. So okay. we, wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to use that as an, uh, at all in an actual debate. So, but we're, we're still allowed to do the first part, which is more 
guiding you in the right direction. And that's, I've heard that that's been allowed, that's allowed where, you know, here's five arguments. I'm going to expand upon it from there. I'm going to card cut based off what, like what I'm, essentially what you can do in high school is you can take these five arguments, right? So let me see, yeah. let me see if I understand the concern. The concern is that for evidence, it has to come from something that's real and not something that's made up by AI. It has to come. Is that, is that a fair way to say it? I say, I, 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 I mean, the terms real and. I know. I'm just trying up. to push you a little bit. Like, yeah. yeah. You could say yeah. directly quoted and paraphrased by AI. Good. <laughs> so, so you need to use direct quotations is what I've heard. Okay. Like. CNN.com states this, 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 instead of... So, so the 4 the four, if the 4.0 model is, goes back to, I think it goes, it goes back to October 2023. And if we could ask AI to whatever evidence you come up with, actually quote from and cite the sources, would that meet the need? Uh, Those are I big ifs, I know, but yeah, what, level. yeah. That's just not allowed. So I need to first change the policy up in the why national level. Why do you think level. it's not allowed? If you're allowed to go to the website and quote from it, why couldn't AI go to the website and quote from it? I think you can share this tab and say, I think, I don't remember where I found it. I remember. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, and, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I, yeah, yeah. I, I just remember it was there somewhere that uh, it said somewhere that you have, you can't use AI for this. I don't know why that policy exists. I assume to stop people from paraphrasing. Yes, right. And I can see why it's I there. I, I, I just I agree with you like, totally. I get that. I get that. However, yeah. however, yeah. I, as AI develops, it will be able to quote and be accurate to its sources as well. Right? So yeah. So if, so, the, if the policy if the is pol about don't paraphrase stuff, get the real stuff, I'm all for that, right? But can can we but, build partners yeah. that do that? Is and, and it's a it's a question. Yeah. I don't know for sure. But I think also as AI's capabilities start mm -hmm. to develop, it's going to lead to a change. Everybody's policies are going to have right. to start to change, and th there is I guarantee that like this was very recently voted on. Like I think this all started. This all happened like last year or somewhere around is when these policies by the National Debate Association were decided upon. So they can vary, there there are processes in place to change that. And I feel that if, depending on how people want to start using AI, depending on how the future all pans out, the policy may very well likely yeah. change. Maybe not, maybe not the time that I'm, maybe not during the time that I'm debating, maybe the time in the future, like when my sibling is debating or something mm -hmm. like that. Who's in sixth grade, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's going to six, okay. he's going up to six so, grade next year. All right, can you send me a link to those guidelines? I will try to okay. find them. Yes, uh, where the original link. Uh, so that so this partner as so the, I would want to I think I'd probably want to rebuild this partner from the ground mm -hmm. up to align. I just want to keep the original obviously on now comment, but I'd want to just redo this partner slightly like from the ground up mm -hmm. in my free time. Before the camp starts, uh, and this this partner, if if if, the, if the, this partner checks the accuracy of the evidence, so if we're not creating evidence from now comment, then this partner isn't necessary either, because this partner basically just double checks the work of this mm -hmm. partner. So if this partner isn't doing any, if if we don't have this partner in the first place, then this partner doesn't really need to be imported either. And then this partner is also very interesting. It's it's the rebuttal partner mm -hmm. we created. When and, you say we created, uh, who, who created it? Yeah. I mean, okay, I created it, and then you added see some language. Okay. You like Got it. You created a copy with That's like clear. the language, okay. like responding yeah. languages, yeah. right? So that would be just a basic gist of what I need to what we need to do, uh, what I need to do and import and create before the camp, and. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, like I've seen people, but like immediately I, the, I just asked a generic question to my friend, to that friend, is AI allowed at the debate club? I was, he was like immediately right off the bat, like an emphatic no. And then I pressed him for details. And so I don't, I think the attitude, I don't even, obviously this is like, um, 
I'm kind of getting a secondhand source, so to speak. No, so here's so I yeah. I want to like I think first before I like get anything too prepared for high school, I want to first I'm gonna chat with the coaches on Monday hopefully, and because the unlike the middle school coach unlike the, the you're an upstart uh, middle school yeah. debate this is being done by those yeah. guys okay this is being done by the coaches yeah, of the high school. I want to chat with them first, ask about their attitudes to AI before, you know, you know, just just, just figure out what the situation so, is up there. Play but, Aditya, there. keep in mind, and I think you usually do, I just want to encourage you to think this way, that you are using AI in a way that, so when you say, is AI allowed, they may be saying no to chat GPT, for example, or, you know, something, whatever is in their head about what AI is. Um, and it takes a little time of drilling down and saying, okay, you're against it because of this, because of that. Do you know it can do this? Like having that dialogue is, you got to find time for that, I think. Or what do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely think that's going to be it's important. Maybe all this is not going to exactly pan out in my freshman mm -hmm. year, but hopefully we'll be able to have a chat about this sometime and I'll be able to use all the work that i put in i definitely you will <laughs> um yeah hi paul aditya do you you said at the beginning here that you had to run in uh 20 minutes and it's about 20 minutes and yeah we, we covered a yeah, lot really fast know. there and i'll go back and listen to that recording again and try to support you to do yeah. this um and uh yeah uh, just uh, yeah, keep it tentative with your coaches and everything, and yeah. yeah, and 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 just try to keep try to keep saying um, we've been using AI in a different way than is is out there in the products, you know, in in the in yeah. the big models that are out there. We have some other ways of playing. Yeah, and it. if they even ask, what? Yeah, like they they can definitely I can definitely connect them with like I can. Like they, they already know like the middle school mm -hmm. coaches and stuff. So I, I, I'll, I'll see what happens on Monday. You know, just play it by ear. I appreciate, I appreciate your coach. Out. Go for it. Um, and, and there are fireworks yeah. happening where you are. Go, go see the fireworks. Yeah, like three, three minutes okay. from where we are. It's not, it's not right now. But I want to. I don't know what's going on with like yeah. rain and stuff. I want to just like okay. figure it out. Like I think, I think we might Say actually. What? I don't it's know. It's all good. Thank you for stopping. Thank you so me. much. For sure. You too. Have a great day. Okay. So there we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. He's so Adi awesome. Adi 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 kind of amazing. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. He's so into it. I know. It's ama It's just astounding. But his social understanding is like what's yeah. amazing. To I know his, his emotional intelligence is yeah, really yeah. Is yours. Um, yeah, when you meet him, when I met him physically, he was just this junior high school kid, right? <laughs> With the t shirt on. It's like, oh my god, you're a detail. <laughs> hey, I, oh, I'm on recording, so sorry, total respect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the um, I was gonna say that what he was saying. Like, uh, I have a couple thoughts. One is, uh, I'm going to be at Drew Writing Project next Wednesday. When, oh, you are? Oh. Yeah. When um, his That's teacher's, the tenth, right? Yeah. His teacher's going to be there. And um, Sidronsky, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's And is she coming with her students? She is, you yeah. know. Oh, is she? That'd be awesome. So what, was, what she has been doing is she's been coming. I don't know how many she's bringing on the 10th, but she's been coming with a dozen of her students and they all sit around and show teachers what they're doing. But that's anyway, really yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm supposed to have a conversation after it or be like the facilitator of a conversation about. Oh, cool. It's called real world practices, school policies and classroom rules and exceptions. <laughs> And so it's me with a couple of a high school teacher, a medical school teacher, and me. So anyway, just listening to him on that was interesting from that level. I know nothing about school-based policy, school level policy, but I was thinking about like, it's a little crazy. 
Wait, Paul, you sound sick. Did you get COVID? Yeah, I have COVID right now. I'm from I'm in David, get, right? I didn't get it from David, but <laughs> unless you unless you can unless you can incubate it for a week, um, I got it a week after he did. Did you, yeah. Paul? Do you think you got it at the wedding, or do you think you got it on the on the no, flight? No, I think I don't know. I who knows? I I've given up trying to figure it out. I like I don't yeah. So they don't know how long they incubate. Paul Paul Hankins, you were coughing too, though. You okay? I had, I had dry throat. Don't you try to pin this on me? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Man, so you can't you can't get it through video. I don't press out on us, Paul. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm fine. It's worse than that. The the other side of this is I've been isolated for you know five days, so I'm mm. I'm anxious. Oh, you're going to a little crazy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, well, anyway, not really. Um, so I had that conversation coming up. So I think it would be interesting to. So let's let's keep talking about that. Can you give the title again? Yeah. And Paul Hankins, tell us what the rules are in your school. No, I want to hear the the yeah. the categories again. The categories are coming out of the title. <clears throat> Critical conversations, real mm -hmm. world practices, school policies, and classroom rules and expectations. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I think that I got put on it because well, I David, did you have a question there? I was just it? what's the convening umbrella for that? Oh, that, sorry. That talk? Yeah, so it's AI and Writing Institute, and there's three days, there's four days if you're going to get credit, but there's three days. So there's a bunch of teachers coming to Drew for this thing. Oh, the first day is called Literacy Below the Screen, the second oh. day is called Rethinking the Tools of Writing, and the third day is called Classroom and Institutional Practice. Oh, and I'm on the third day. Oh wow! So this is—is is this uh, how many people are attending and coming? Is this this is a Drew Writing Project sponsored summer program? Summer Institute, yeah. I don't know how many are going to be there. Okay, it'll probably be. I see. Okay, seventy-five, hundred, yeah. But yeah. So, There's oh, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be that much, or if it's like I know that it was popular, but yeah, I don't know how many summer okay. institutes. Christina, awesome. are you there all three days or are you just there on the third day? I'm just there on the third day. So I'll hear Jill. Um, she's in the morning. So the the third day is there's writing and play in the day in the morning, then a workshop with Jill. Oh, it is a student-led workshop. That's great. Then there's some effective practices conversation, then lunch, and then this critical conversation with me, a high school teacher and a middle school teacher. Oh, I see. Wow. So you're facilitating this small panel for this group in the afternoon on day three. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I think I think I'm on the panel. I think what's happened is Kristen is interviewing us. And I think that I said that's Kristen Turner, but yeah, go ahead. Turner. Yeah. I think I said somewhere we need to find out how professionals in the field are using it. You know, we need to hear more from professionals in the field was I think a comment she thought was good and therefore wanted me to talk about that. But not that I know all that well what professionals are doing. I know a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, in, but I am curious about this, like not using AI thing um, just as a policy because so many tools are just sticking AI in. I mean, you almost can't avoid using AI. You're, or it's going to increasingly become like that, right? Including, including uh, Chrome. Did, have you seen, yeah. has this popped up on yours yet? It no. So as you're writing in any text space, it comes up and says, hey, do you want help with that? And it in gives you AI text help. Space? In any text space, any text space. Yeah, and your, they stuck it on. Um, sorry, oh my they, God. They stuck it really? on books too yeah so so um, like using ai and not using ai it seems like kind of you can't it's falling <laughs> apart as a policy as quickly as it's getting written right clippy is clippy is rolling over in his digital grave i know right. Poor clippy. <laughs> so i want to get the four things again though there was critical conversations what was the second one um sorry to keep asking conversations is the the title uh -huh. and then the sub sub focus is real world practices okay that's why yeah uh -huh. school pol that's me school policies and classroom rules and expectations 
Wow. That's you know, really that, fun. That, that first a lot in one uh... <laughs> that first one that comes out is who's in whose world is that reality positioned? You know, real world practices when we, you know, and that in the in the world that I've created that feels very real to me. I get to make the rules. I get to set the boundaries. I get to say what you use and what you don't use. So what, what are real world practices at the, at the forefront of that conversation? But then as a subtitle, you think about the three things, how easily siloed they could be, the real world practices, the exceptions. And then uh, it's, it's a really interesting setup for a, yeah, a yeah, yeah. A could conversation that could be compartmentalized very quickly. Completely <laughs> different things, yeah. Uh, so, Christina, are they? Are, do the two right. teachers represent certain positions or certain experiences? Do you have any sense of what they're? Are they bringing a context that's going to be relevant to speak to? Do you know yet? Um, no, mm -hmm. I figure they. I don't know exactly what they're bringing. I figure that they are. Um, you know, classroom teachers sure. who are just going to be talking about like what it looks like in their school. Right. And, you know, no, I mean, Kristen's been facilitating a lot of conversations in, in the Northern, this is like Northern New Jersey in the Northern New Jersey area. And Jill Sadronsky is one of their TCs. Uh -huh. So I think that there's like, they're probably somewhat versed as teachers in talking about what's going on. Sure. Um, so let's, uh, one of the ways to think about this though, is from a student's perspective, it seems to me. Uh -huh. and, and I have heard students uh, on a forum say that it's really not fair to them to come into a classroom and not know what the rules are, right? Uh -huh. Right. Aditi has even said that. He said like, if, if a teacher says, don't use AI for this, I won't use it for this. He's even that with these uh, guidelines from, you know, the debate folks. Um, tell me what the rules are and I'll, I'll abide by those rules. I use AI where I'm allowed. I won't use them where I'm not allowed. Right. Even though he kind of understands that that line can change. But for teachers to just not have a rule or a policy feels unfair to kids, I would say. Right. Yeah. Because they don't know what to push against. Um, mm hmm. And I, but then I also think for schools to have policies, I don't know how schools have policies and let teachers change the rules in their own classrooms. So I worry about policies. <laughs> Others worry about that too. Um, what's her name? Alana Winnick. It's, it's sort of her, her position that she's putting out there a lot is that schools don't need policies. Teachers need clarity, right? That's um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know for sure. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. I mean, I also taught in a teaching writing program at Hopkins where they had a policy. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I made like a rule that like was around that policy. You know, I invited people to use it. I'm trying to even remember what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but it was something like you can use it to look up information, but you can't use it to produce your own produce work and, and put it under your name. You know, you yes. can't use it for production. And I said, you know, I'm happy for you to, I, you know, this thing about like, you have to say, you know, it's not your authorship if you use it for production. So I said, okay, well, if you use it in your production, you know, you can test it in your production process because there's lots of aspects of your production that you're doing, but just name it, you know, and um, mm -hmm. anyway. so that's kind of how I got so, around that one a little bit. The, the, the other thing, go, sorry. I, I, I had a general question. One, I'm always curious about the extent to which teachers or their schools or their sponsoring departments oblige people who are using tech in whatever fashion to secure permissions uh, from parents and in so doing they have to somehow explain 
to the parent community how these how the kids are interacting with technology for the purposes of use of their likeness or you know there were all kinds of ways that that would unfold around media but um whenever you have to speak well, to a child's parent you quickly wind up being very specific about what your intentions are yeah that's interesting and uh it, it also leads to being very practical about what you're seeking to do so have you bumped into people who ha who, are, who are is that end user experience or end guardian parent experience part of the puzzle or is it really just teach teachers in their department chairs and their schools and their districts casting about trying to figure out where they stand and um paul hankins what about your school and your parents yeah no um <laughs> it's it's not there and it's a it's an important thing to consider when you're thinking about even using cuomo space right and bringing yeah. students together in a place where it becomes a virtual field trip of sorts and you right. have to sign the slips you know <laughs> so um, not in our in our building no um you know technology is a novelty where a lot of people are using apps and platforms but not necessarily with any intention beyond gamification most times yeah so right. and, and it goes it goes beyond signing the slips right i mean yeah we can get the slip signed but get getting the understanding and the conversation and the dialogue like mm. to to, to one example is is it okay to use the store your great your grandfather's story on this site and then that gets it into open ai and then you get a response comes back to it you know i mean do parents understand that you know and to you know to what degree it might be or might not be protected if you use chat gpt or if you use our system you know that that's pretty complicated i don't i don't know how to explain that to parents but it needs to be talked about mm. did that did that make any sense what i just said yeah absolutely yeah. all right yeah i mean i think the parent factor is really interesting i hadn't really thought about that thank you you know i will i've mentioned this to paul before but i've kind of imagined that sort of an introductory pd to teachers who are going to use ai mm. could well you know if the goal of a pd is to sort of do work yourself right Mm -hmm. to do the thing you're exploring would be to you know sort of organize sort of a collective co-design co project on what's our communication to our parent community going to be when we plan to use tools like this in our classes this school year and uh you know use ai to develop that right and so you know, it's, that's it's a very applied demonstration of something but yeah. it, it's it's a it's a gap in the uh in the in the chain of responsibility and in the understanding of its possibilities that's that's missing and and i keep hearing lots of conversation cycling about districts that say don't use it or do use it and you know you can see how that would unfold and paul i'm sh paul hankins i'm sure you're you're very close to it i'm not in the classroom anymore but i mean this is the thing that makes me think about that is if there's an intention on the part of a teacher to be responsible steward of this technology in relation to his or her kids and knowing that his or her kids are going to need to get the slip sign and the slip's going to need to, in some respects, Paul, um, Allison, explain what you just narrated. Like mm -hmm. using this platform means the things that are shared are going to be referred to and recompiled in this way, not that way. And we'll be doing the following things. You know, are you, it just feels like a really interesting exercise um, for all parties. Yeah, it seems hard. <laughs> yeah, hard. it is. I think you're right. It is hard. So when I went to Jill's school a few weeks ago and met with the DTA and another student and three of the tech cur curriculum advisors, um, after talking to those students, these these curriculum, um, what do you call them, coaches, um, the, um, their notion was that there is a, there's a district-wide meeting with parents, administrators, teachers, and you know, everybody, um, like once a month, and that these students should present to those to in that forum, right? So, um, that seems to make a lot of sense to me that there needs to be dialogue maybe before the documents, or I don't know if before or after or in between, yeah. right? There needs to be documents and then there needs to be dialogue, conversation, like, I don't understand that. Right. So 
I think that was really smart for them to suggest that. Um, I, I, I want to bring up again the the concern, the five percent concern that the Adityas of the world are like teaching us how to do this, but there is the ninety five percent who aren't involved, right? So we need to think about that too, and who aren't turned on by this stuff. So how it impacts those students is another question. But anyway, I'm. Those are just some of the concerns. Well, um, the way that I was coming about this originally, so you guys have given me a lot to think about, um, was also just in my, when I'm teaching multimodal stuff, I mm -hmm. am trying to, I mean, like we would anyway with any even single modal stuff. Um, what do professionals do in the field, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of analysis also, um, I mean, hearing from the students, I think is really important. And I think that there's a conversation about how are writers in the field using this, how are, like, I just talked to that woman who was my student this past semester, who's a, a college administrator, Paul. I told you I was mm -hmm. going to ask her about last week's discussion. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was really interesting what she said. So, in, you know, but like there's like- What'd she say? Um, what you want? Yeah, so she said that, um, she kind of laughed when I brought it up, first of all, because obviously it's what they talk about all the time. <laughs> she said that- just, just AI and admissions essays, is that- The implication of AI on admissions, yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. And then she said that, you know, the thing is that they have a package from the student. They don't have just an essay and mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for that package to make sense, like have an integrity to it. So one of the things that is sort of easy to spot is if AI helped the kid or if somebody else helped the kid, right? Like write something that's not really true that often you can tell, mm -hmm. but but sometimes you can and 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 actually you know maybe ai was used in some way but she she was really saying like it it helped it you know she sees it also as a tool to to level the playing field because mm -hmm. all these rich kids get help to write their essays and you know so anyway that's that's, that's by the way from you know a dozen years ago why jess early is so in why she's doing this. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. anyway, it was just, it was, and she was very like matter of fact, I mean, she laughed, but it wasn't like she was tortured about it. She mm -hmm. was just like, this is what's happening, you know? And so I thought that was interesting. Hmm. But anyway, I feel like we also need to hear from people like that who are working in the field and, you know, and, who are journalists. Like, I'd love to hear from some journalists about, you know, and I don't know how, what are people doing with AI professionally? Um, HR departments, what are, you know, I don't know. I just, I started looking at some Deloitte stuff just because I was trying to figure out like what, what they're tracking in like corporate communities. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Christina, I, want, I wonder what your thoughts are as a multimodal composition instructor. Like the college applications are still monomodal. I mean, they're, they're yeah, still, yeah, they're totally monomodal. They, yeah. even, even if they have a paper and they are a staple in the upper left hand corner or you're <laughs> submitting that it, staple, yeah. Submitting it digitally, <laughs> it's still, still pretty flat. I just wonder in a new age and concerns about authorship. Like why we haven't moved to like digital application formats where the yeah. student is making a introductory video. I mean, or portfolios. We, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, those exist, of course, and there are there's uh, and there's a in some places a robust college acceptance program that that looks at them. Um, Parsons has them. But, yeah. Well, yeah, but, but way beyond that. I mean, my old friend. I've talked to him recently, David Nicodula, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Richard, Nicodula. Richard Pitcher. 
and but there are, are consortiums that he's part of, and those consortiums have pretty strong roots now. So anyway, there's there high school there's though, right? Isn't he working high school or is he doing college? But it's no, it's high school, but okay. for but for college admissions, and so they put together oh. a a pretty rich, um, multimodal package that gets sent to colleges. Um, so oh. those these it it's it's possible. Um, and the technologies there, so that's worth exploring. And yeah, uh, I don't, yeah, he and I are just starting to talk about AI and so forth, so mm. that'll be interesting to think about. Um, Paul, I just want to give you a chance to come to the table with what's on your mind <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> what's, what's on my mind? Um, mm, the events of the last week are on my mind. Hmm. Uh, and I've also been you reading democracies on your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, it's not my De hand. Democracy. Yeah. Uh, so I've been reading. Uh, I started off. Uh, an author, Brian Bliss, recommended uh, Mikado uh, Fujimura's Art and Faith. Right. So it's kind of a theology of making and creating. You know, uh, Karita Kent uh, once said that making is the act of hope. You know, as long as people are still making things, um, there there's hope out there. So I wanted to back up, <clears throat> and I wanted to see what Mikado was saying earlier. So he's a uh, he's a Japanese artist of the slow art movement. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not I'm not sick. I'm just dry. Uh, <clears throat> he um, so like a multimodal composer, he does multi layers of paint on a canvas until he finally gets his desired result. Um, a fascinating process. But I backed up and I read his book called Culture Care. You know, and this idea, uh, so I, I put it out on uh, Facebook the other day. Let me see. I'm going to get to the word real quick because I have it underlined like 100 times in here. Um, you know, I'll get to it, I promise. Take Actually, he spends, a lot, he spends a lot of time talking about Emily Dickinson and uh, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, here's the word, um, Merck Stapas, Merck Stapas, right? So it's an old English word that comes, and I may be even mispronouncing it because I can't find it. Uh, it's an old English word that comes out of Beowulf. You know, this, this Merck Stapas, this idea. How do you spell it? Uh, M-E-A-R-C-S-T-A-P-A-S. So it's almost like Mirks and then tapas, like you go to a tapas restaurant. Uh -huh. uh, but the idea of the word is that you're a, a, a border stalker, um, sometimes crossing in and out of a permeable membrane of something that may be a border. And you operate in that space to create possibilities and hope for change. You know, and there's a, there's a point in the book where he says, you know, the dissension in our culture only creates more fissures within the soil. It doesn't create an abundance of the soil. And what I've been seeing in social media over the last six days have been people saying, if you believe X, I'm going to unfriend you. And it, it makes me wonder about the genesis of that friendship in the first place. How, how did you come together that this is the reason that you would terminate a, a digital friendship, which I, I assume would mean by way of proximity, how close you are geographically, your physical friendship. And I, I have some concerns uh, for our country and our culture when we say, I, I will disavow you if you believe something that's in opposition to what I believe. Uh, I know there's a lot at stake. So sometimes I, I wax poetically about possibility and hope and change. But this idea of the word that he keeps coming back to, this idea of, um, you know, even talking about, you know, there's a lot of controversy around Harper Lee's uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. But he points to the character Scout as one of these literary Merck Stapas, uh, the idea that she's able to present herself by uh, illuminating the humanity of somebody who might be in opposition to her, but then warming the community to the idea and using what? You know, using the power of her naivete, using the power of her youth, using the power of not knowing where her lanes. And that's another concern that I have, too, the the, the hyper discussions around lanes and staying in them. I don't, I don't know what my lane is. 
anymore. So I, I'm encouraged by the reading that I've done uh, in the last uh, couple of days, just slow reading this uh, Fujimura uh, work. But I, but I also picked up real world writing. Mm -hmm. So I've been I've been reading that. So of course I'm trying to synthesize That's Jess, yeah, Jess yes. Early's book. Yeah, Jess Early's okay. book. And uh, mm -hmm. you know when she's talking about um, sponsorships, yeah, I've I've never heard anybody really say it that way before. Like when a student comes in to write their admissions essay, who who are their sponsors? I mean, it almost sounds Hunger Games uh, ish. You know the idea of a sponsor coming through with a parachute, bringing something into the arena for you, but do our students know who their sponsors are? Like who has helped them up to the point that they sit down and start to write an essay? You know, can, could they list them? Um, one of the things that uh, Fujimura recommends at the end of his book is coming up with a board of directors for your life. You know, who are the people from whom you would take <laughs> advice? You know, who are the people from whom you would take criticism? You know, it's kind of interesting. And I, and I went on, that was an overshare from me, but uh, you asked me what I, was, you know, what I was doing, so. That's what these summer times are about. <laughs> oh, sure. Absolutely. Now, how, do you do, do just in your classroom there in, in Indiana, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see the um, fragments and dif different points of view in your classroom? And what do you th it, do you apply any of this to your teaching is what I'm asking. Or you you know, know, it, you my I, I always my my kids try to nail me down all the time because I think they find this it's just something they do all day long with their teachers is try to figure out where they sit, and I always tell mine that I I'm the guy sitting in the center of the aisle tripping people on the way to the Coke machine, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to try to nail me down, it's like nailing down political Jello. Um, yeah, yeah, you you can you can see it, and usually the the, the uh, the divisions are along socioeconomic lines, hmm. which to me always like seems kind of counterintuitive when you think, you know, this is this 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 is straight out of Tuesdays with Maury. If you're trying to impress the people at the top, forget about it; they'll only look down at you, right? If you're trying to impress the people at the bottom, you know, for, forget them, right? The the people that we chase after sometimes politically would have very little use for us on a Wednesday afternoon if we encountered them at the grocery store, if they were going to be there or not. So I don't always know what we're chasing sometimes with our ideologies uh, and when we want to win. Um, well, cool. Paul, I have a, a, another totally different conversation I want to have with you, if that's okay. Um, and, and it's been about, I mean, you've shown interest to use writing partners and to work with us, and it's wonderful that you've been coming like this. One of the things Dave, David Cole and I have talked about um, for writing partners is, and I'll, I'll get to this, this. So this is a very legit, more practical conversation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everything you've shared so far. But what we want to say to a teacher like you is, um, is there a cohort of, of teachers or uh, could be guidance counselors, whatever, who could work with you on writing partners rather so it's not being one teacher doing this? I had this conversation with Harry Brake, for example, and in 20 minutes, he said, oh, the guidance counselor should be part of this. The tech guy should be part of this. Then there's this, this guy who's developing the English curriculum for the whole district. He should be part of this. And so I said, okay, we need a meeting with those four people and, and that we come into your school with, with that. Is mm -hmm. that a possibility for you to think through or? It, 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 de it, def it definitely is. Um, Again, I'm, I'm affirmed by the reading that I've done in the last six days, but this idea of walking along the edge, walking along the border of being a 20 year teacher, but not being an administrator puts me at the table in different kinds of configurations where I'm actually sitting with our district curriculum coordinators at the elementary and secondary level. So they, they know who I am. I'm not a person out of building number five, making an odd request. I'm, I'm Paul sending you an email today to ask you a question about, could we have a meeting around this particular platform and this tool that may be beneficial and helpful uh, to our student writers? We, we could have, we could, we could create a situation like that. I feel like pretty quickly. Hmm. We have, a, we have a, 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 a principal who's been in the business for a while, but he's only been in our building for a year. He's pretty progressive, progressive to the point of 
if there's a new idea, let's go after it. Let's go chase after it, right? And I think that he would be very much on board. I've been trying to get him here to Cuomo space, but I think the the pain point is I'm not he sure. He doesn't that, have to come to our place. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can come to his. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we, could, we could make something like that happen. Uh-huh. I mean, if um, that's kind of an ideal scenario, having done a bunch of work in small school settings, oftentimes around career academies or other places where um, – there was always a there was a there was a an educator or a team of educators who served as the sponsors, and when there was a design model that included, say, the guidance counselor and the department chair, and an outside uh, mentor, for example, and they came to a so-called kickoff, and it was attached to things like block scheduling and an interdisciplinary collaboration between a science and a math teacher, the the critical mass that happens in that group was profound compared to solo educators doing solo work Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. an expert teacher like you a master teacher like you paul who has those colleagues those professional colleagues on your contact list who take your call or who you find yourself working with and can develop those kinds of frameworks for experimentation that makes such a difference the quality that comes out of that and the writing project has done this over and over again. I'm just astounded by how effective that can be as a way to incubate um, really good questions and really interesting responses come out of that kind of setting. And it's sort of ideal for the kinds of inquiry that Paul, Allison, you've been doing and and sort of fl- and and freestyling your way through with the Jills and so forth. Um, Getting that critical mass is so valuable. Where you can find it. Yeah, I. I but I, I. Yeah, freestyling my way through. The, the the thing is, we could we could we could say to Paul, yeah, yeah, let's do this, right? But right. I think we're coming back to you, Paul, and saying, hey, let's first set up a group and and let's find out, do you share students with a math teacher and a science teacher? You know how how is your school organized? And can can we think about this making sense in a school fashion rather than just you being doing this crazy thing again, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yep. And I actually, and I actually think this comes back to the critical conversations piece, Christina, because I think it's about schools moving together with AI instead of just, instead of doing nothing and teachers and students, you know, individually figuring stuff out. <laughs> I, I, I just think there some, some coordination would be really helpful, I think, with AI. Because if you don't, then everyone gets jealous, you get, you distrust what others are doing. I think AI is dangerous that way. Yeah, and, but, yeah. and I mean, it's, going to be everywhere in the next year. So, I mean, there's also, I just think like really practically, you know, what's, I, you know, that arrival tech, it's arriving in everything. It is. Yet it's not equal in everything, right? There's powerful uses and there are, you know, sucky right. uses. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Fair enough. So um, I could end, <laughs> sorry. So Paul, think about that, please. Uh, mm-hmm. And think about setting, like even in the summertime, setting up a meeting with the, um, you called them sponsors earlier. Your, the, the sponsors in your school who, who would look after this, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, with Harry, when he mentioned the tech guy, he said, Oh, he has all these AI things he wants to do. And I'm like, uh, we should be talking then. We can't just bring in another tool, you know, without him being involved. Um, cool, cool. Maybe you should rest again, Paul. I could, I could do that. Probably. I <laughs> did did want to say, I'm, I'll say it without, maybe. Can, can I demonstrate one thing? Do you have Please. Five? Hopefully it'll be fast enough. So I did. um, I'm finding it. Mm. 
So the question, a couple of the questions that came up last week was, were, this one start, had to do with, would there be a way to, well, first of all, the examples, um, David, you said this most clearly, like, could we, could the examples, could we say to the examples, give us examples of, of using description, but don't use my content, use another person's content. So I, yeah. I played with that a little bit. Um, I also played with, um, so let me go to this one. You know, Paul, speaking of which, I started yes. to do a writing part, a thinking partner. I wanted to get your coaching on how to actually implement it because I put okay. the draft in. And so um, I'm really curious about where is it, is it now comment or over here? Uh, good question. I think it's in now comment, come to think of it. And and I'll say, by the way, that working with Mark Zizek in um, uh, Wisconsin yeah. this, this week around um, uh what's it called this i believe essays yeah um building these thinking partners or a set of thinking partners around a genre like that is an interesting idea i think it's developing yeah mm -hmm. i guess yes. uh, um so anyway so here's what i'll show here am i am i sharing screen i hope i am did i yes. share yes. screen okay good <laughs> so this is what the description tutor does now it's taking this whole essay, which, you know, we can't take time to read it, but, um, and it summarize, it does just one paragraph. It says, okay, your description already demonstrates a strong use of the senses of sight. It gives a couple examples, and then it very quickly says, here are some other things you could do with the senses. And then it asks, would you like to see more examples, right? And then this is the part that, like the learn the user needs to learn to do they hit reply with ai and say yeah show me more right yes i'd like to see more and then it says oh great we'll go deeper with seeing here's what you could do with seeing in your text um no actual example is given but some real detailed sort of when you go you know you could do this you could do that hearing is identified would you like to see more and then it goes to three more examples so just in terms of building these things, um, building these writing partners, having a kind of quick, if that's all you want, that's good. If you want more, we can go deeper. I, it, it's not exactly a bot back and forth, obviously, but it does begin to have some conversation going. Does that make some sense? Yes. I really like the affirmation that the tutor gave back to say, you're already doing something. Let's take, let's take a look at that. So I'm not creating something new that's not already there. You have something that we can build upon. I think that's a conversation that I would have uh, with a student, not to say that it's not existent. You, you, have, you have the workings of something. Uh -huh. We just need to add a little textual tissue to it. Um. Yeah. Cool. Just to say, I don't know. I mean, so let me say it this way. If you if you go to so if you wanted to see how is this built, you would go to the community of practice. I'm saying this to you, David, as much as anybody. And you would or else feel free. Uh, but and in the community of practice there's called or a collection called reflections on prompts and you could find this description or prompt and you could kind of look at how this was built right cool um so but just to say you know, the way we um the way this one was built it says okay you're going to do a multiple paragraph extended answer but they're only going to show us your first paragraph First shows your first paragraph. When I ask for more, shows your second part, then your third part. Then we define define what the first, second, and third parts are, right? Uh -huh. And give it an ending kind of thing. Is that helpful hmm. or interesting? Or yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul Hankins, please feel free to jump in and try to make one of these. I'd, um, I'd like whatever to, you're thinking about. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make one called the Warm Demander. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> You're coming, coming with some affirmations, but also some really pointed, you know. Warm what? Demander. Oh, I like that. The warm demander. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think hey, we Paul? do say, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, no, go ahead. Let me to interrupt. No, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, I, Paul, I, I just want to say this, that um, you, when you look at like a, a really well-developed one like this, that I spent, you know, half a day in, in isolation doing, or redoing, actually, we, um, it can be intimidating, not to you, but <laughs> it would be some, but it, they don't have to be this complicated to start with. Um, I, I like the idea that a learning how to write prompts is one thing. A prompt engineer is somebody who writes prompts, tests them out on text, and then rewrites them and tests them out. That iterative process is what makes you an engineer. <laughs> So I just encourage you to start with whatever you're thinking right now and jump in and make one and then play with it. Go ahead, David. Um, yeah. The thing I started is in, as in writing partners. I just checked again. I'd it love is to in get writing you. partners. Okay. Should yeah, I look at it? Yes, I'd love that. Okay. Which one? It's called, it begins C with a C, uh, casual, casual writing and constructive... Let's see here. I just had it open. Um, casual and constructive writing conversations is what it's called. I and I casual. Push... Let's see. <laughs> it's. Um... Yeah, let me look for it this way. Yeah, it's not public. Yeah, it, w it would still show up online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't see it. It's in Writing Partners. You sure? Yeah, I'm looking at it now on Writing Partners. Let's share your screen then, maybe. Uh, let me. Um, let's see. Can you? Um, here, I'll text you the. Uh, Give another way to look. Cover. New document. There. Working partners. I just sent you a chat with a link. Can you go? To, can you go to it as an editor? Probably. <laughs> okay. Did you ever hit update on that? I think I thought I did, but maybe okay. not. I'll find it. <laughs> okay, we can look at it here. I'm good. I'm sharing screen still, right? Yes, you are. Oh, cool. You're using the headings. That's a good idea. So do you want to read through it or question it? Or uh, Sure, I'll read through it. If, if you, if, do you have the patience for it? I mean, I want to, I mean, sure. having, been a, having been a guy if on anybody a needs to jump off, feel free. <laughs> Go ahead. You sure, Paul? I, I'm just, I'm sitting here doing a, just trying to get a discussion going and now comment about my topic. So I'll okay. send, I'll email you it. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you, Christina. Thanks, Christina. Thanks. And David and Paul, I'm going to let you work through this. I'm going to have See you to later. Okay. log off. Okay. So I will not be with you next week uh, because okay. we're signing up with a uh, AP tip uh, consortium out of Notre Dame. So I'm going to, I've been teaching AP for over, oh, uh, over 15 oh, you years. That a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah going to my first summer institute next week so we'll see so is there uh, is there a is there a moment you think you could set up a meeting for us to talk uh, about yeah, yeah. When, when i when i when i come back from si next week uh i'll, okay. I'll start uh, putting that together but, that uh, sounds good thank you right. for everything you've contributed really love sure. it thanks yeah, cool So Paul, I so, was trying. Yeah. I, you know, I was coming out of that conversation last week. Casual and, and, and constructive. Yeah, go ahead. Do, doing this, trying to do the same thing you did. Um, I can read this aloud if that's helpful. Yeah. Let me. Um, I might do it. Now, over just here. keep right. in mind, and I need to put this in the text that none of this description goes to the AI, right? But. Right. But go ahead. But go ahead. So. Oh. Uh, this none of part? none of the. Go ahead, go ahead. You got it. This no finish your finish your thought, Paul. No, what you're about to read doesn't go. That what's in that box mm -hmm. is just for us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. 
This writing partner is a thoughtful, thoughtful mentor and writing coach that tries to follow the tone and direction in your conversations mm. with the AI to recreate the experience of authentic feedback and forth. Rather than offer primarily direct responses and recommendations to a text, the writing partner will use language that approximates conversational feedback, the give and take that sets you up to have a kind of dialogue with the bot and with your own thinking process. Uh -huh. Persona, the persona of this writing partner is a skilled writer and humble personality that knows how to guide developing writers and as well as confident authors bit by bit, providing only nudges and supporting questions and suggestions, avoiding fully fleshed out answers. Hmm. When a writer asks for an example of an improvement of some kind, this bot reviews the matter, the material and subject matter created, formulates a parallel topic and line of thinking and uses this subject at ra rather subject matter and presentation to share feedback and examples of potential directions for the writer to consider. The personality of the writing partner refers reflects the, the kind of personal process writing championed by Peter Elbow and Ken McCrory. Purpose. Oh, cool. The purpose of this writing partner is to build conversational back and forth into the design of a thinking partner. If the roots of the current system are structured as a text response tool, building off an annotation framework, the casual and constructive writing conversation partner seeks to emulate dialogue and exchanges that a writing coach sitting next to the writer in a one-to-one -one review session might offer. While this, generally speaking, reflects the goal and design of every writing partner, the point with this one is to avoid providing fully fleshed out answers, text and background research, and instead center the role and method of this writing partner in an active listening mode, offering succinct examples of direction, or angles or details in the writing or, or the writer's thinking process that could be mined to bring forth better and better ideation and expression that turn in, that in turn inform the writing itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the process, the process unfolding with this writing partner should be modeled on the idea of a shared brainstorm. Sorry about that. Okay. I thought you had cats. <laughs> no, we're next to a, we're done. Yeah. Oh, that's great. This, What's wrong? <laughs> you need to intervene? No, I don't. There's a business next door that takes care of dogs, and sometimes uh -oh. this happens. Okay. I'll shut the window here. That'll make it a little better. So um, this is my, this yeah, is my attempt in, in an over-academic over way to try to jumpstart a piece of this. It's a great idea. Um, and you were... Messing with the same stuff I was trying to mess with. I see you stopped reading, but I'm reading the process. Oh, I can the product to... created is the extended conversation. Yeah. Have you tried it yet? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, so this is, this is where my lack of expertise in the interface and the steps got in the way. Yeah. Um, share the writing partner with let's share it with uh um where is it uh, my brain just stopped um with community practice okay i'm so on I'm, 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 yeah i'm in it now so should i just update on community oh, practice? i i did it too it's okay, okay. I'll, I'll let you do it now yeah it's done i think oh Somebody created two new ones. Oh, there's yours. Okay. Okay. Um, have you tried it yet? No, I haven't tried it yet. What kind of text would you try it with? Um, oh, good, good question. Well, you know, Paul, this is the question, I think, uh, structurally. Yeah. Um, I, know. And I think this gets at the key part of, you know, what writing partner does versus what mainstream chatbots do, right? Um, the idea, and I started to make a little text that I was borrowing just like the opening paragraph mm -hmm. from that sample student uh, text that I'd found in the Canadian Alberta education site that was a... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I, so I was like, oh, I, maybe I could just start with that and put in the first three sentences and then ask the bot how to keep going or... That's you know, a good the point, idea. You could try the point that. Is not, the point is to, to you know, the, this is the... It's trying to work against type here namely if this was designed 
if the genome of this thing, its DNA is kind of an annotation tool that's premised on having blocks of finished text to critique and sort of take apart. The experience people are using bots for is, is, iterative, is iterative and sort of generative. And it, and it becomes kind of facile if it's not really structured. And so the idea being if, a, you know, you're just kind of trying to write your way into it in real time. So it's kind of like a flow model. So I, I was it. trying. I get it. Yeah, you got it. But yeah. did, 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 were you, I think you were around when Aditya was, and I've never seen him do this. I, I mean, when he explained the different partners that he used in succession yeah. with each other. Yeah. That, that, that's close to a bot, isn't it? It I is close it to is. a bot. That's yeah. right. I was listening to that and I was noting that he was, he was basically putting together an order of operations that was scaffolded. Right. And, and, and he was, and he was, he was, he was doing it. It's like a building an argument. Right. And he understands and, uh, that, that this one depends on what went before. And yeah, you know. that's right. And, and he's, so he's I, trying, yeah, he's creating a kind of an accretive thinking process. So yeah. if you go, if you go to community of practice, so yeah. what, there are two ways to test. Well, there's, yeah, there are two ways to test out what you've created, I think. And one is, one is to go to community practice and hit, Join the discussions. I'm sharing okay. screen still, right? Yeah. Yes. Way at the bottom. And then yeah. you just start a conversation. And this is something that you and I and Jeremy can think about figuring out how to get people to this spot easier, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you could then start a conversation in the comment there. And then in the reply with AI to that conversation, you would choose your writing partner. Mm -hmm. and, and it, it, you, it sticks though too you would then go on and good? continue the conversation right and the, and the conversation the writing space i mean the conversation becomes the writing space right yes and but in this format and this 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 layout the, the writing happens in these pop-up boxes it doesn't happen in the sort of wider um editing yeah. or does it? I, it ends up in these wider editing spaces okay yeah Mm -hmm. So, for example, this one I ask, can you explain more about investigative questioning, right? So yeah. it does this, and then I say, yeah, but what about an education? So it says that, right? And, and uh, is there any point where, yeah, I think the model I was trying to work with was I'm trying to write a college, a, a college admissions essay. Here's my first two, here's my first four sentences. So where try that. So that yeah. sounds great. Do that. Um, I would say the start of the new conversation would be college admissions essay. I mean, Here, let you, me you, share. should I share my screen and you can coach ahead. me and go through? Sure. Yeah, let's do All it. Right. Let me see here. Present screen next. Cancel. Uh, chat with Brave Tab. All right, let me just say Brave Tab. Great. <laughs> I have to select a. Do I select a window? A window to share. And then it gives you all the tabs. Yeah. Which you have to about? choose the right one. Yeah. And, and it, sometimes you have to scroll down a little bit. Let me do this. The entire screen. Okay. Can you see the entire screen right now? Not yet. I think you didn't start it yet. There's like another another layer down where you hit start. It says start. Let me see. Cancel. Let me try again. Present. Share screen. And next. Why won't that happen? Is it my... Nope. Shields are down. Oh, come on. Let me pull. go through my tabs then. I always have too many tabs open, of course. Race parameters, uh, coastal hikes, LDC. This is not getting me where I need to go. Very weird. So present window, and then you don't see all your tabs listed. Pop out person. Let me choose window. Uh, window. Message. And once you choose it, you have to hit start, right? Yeah, the start button is is blackened out, and it doesn't, and I can't when I roll over it with my mouse, uh, my cursor, it, it doesn't engage. It only lets me cancel. 
It's a browser issue. Yeah. Okay. Should, should, should I share again? And why don't, you, why don't you do it? Again, I'll ask. You got the energy for this? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, start new conversation. We're going to call it college admissions. Uh, yeah. See exactly. And. That ends up down here, and then I'll get the, uh, what is it? Do you want me to grab it? I can probably find it. No, I got it. Okay. It's, it's, uh, where is it? It's in Habits of Mind, I think. Which, by the way, I reorganized according to the brainstorm, those four things. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Um, and it's, but it's one of the examples here, right? It's uh, a place in the world. I think it is. It's... No. Yeah, this is it. Is that what you meant? Uh, yes, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. So take the whole first paragraph or just the. Yeah, let's just say just the first paragraph. The goal here is to sort of, is to have the bot write to help me write my way through this essay, right? Okay, so I'm gonna say reply with AI. There are different ways to do this. Um, and it is called, what? what's it called again? Uh, casual um, conversations and constructive feedback and, or something. And it was a um, reflection one, casual, there it is. Okay, so um, what, do you, what do you wanna tell it to do? Uh, I need help with. Oh, let me do something else first. Hold on. I need to hit reply and actually put the, oh, put the material sorry. in here. Hold on. That's an issue. We can work through that. Um, yeah, I think you, th even from the jump, you're. This is one of the things that. Um, yeah, if, but I hear yeah, you. But, you know. Yeah. We need to redesign that box, I guess. Is that yeah. what you're going to say? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, in, in, in an ideal world, it would just be that you open up something that resembles a Google Doc and you start doing the thing we're doing with thinking partners in the way that they've been architected. Okay. You know? Yeah. I think we can work through that. but um, yeah. And we need to. Um, but we're going to go to reply with AI casual, and we're going to say, um, what are we going to tell it to do? We're going to say, "What do you uh, think of my essay so far?" Or, uh, or I've started. A, I've I've started my college essay. I need help getting getting it moving. Or I need help getting. I need help. I need up. Need help building my ideas for my college essay. So it was just basically like I, I got it started. I need to keep going. Okay. That's what I got back. Am I sharing? <laughs> I am. Right. You are. So, so you're off to a good start. Let's unpack what you've written and see where you can expand your piece. So now I might say, okay, here's my first, here's my first four sentences, right? Oh uh, yeah. Where did it go? Oh my God. It did all that too. I didn't see it, did it? It did. <laughs> so you're off to a good start. Let's unpack what you've written and see where you can expand your thinking. Your and it thinking. did it just it, it just did it in response to the to, to the description of the question, right? So I uh, guess the no 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 it did it it takes in the the uh, essay also. Oh, okay. Yeah, it takes. We've set it up so it takes everything that goes before it. Got it. Okay. Um, let me see contrast comparison. This is too much, though, right? I would think so. I mean, the idea, yeah. This is this is. It's, I guess it's it's proving very hard to have the AI sound like a like if you were sitting next to Aditya or or a, or a junior in high school who asked that question, you wouldn't talk like yeah. this, right? You'd you'd. I mean, this right. is. Yeah. But what I did, but I, but what I did with it, someone gets closer. I think. Yes. Um, yeah, it does. So I think what you need to do, uh, oh, 
I mean, what I did with that one, I don't know if you need to do it, right? Yeah, no, what, but, I, but, what I think but, is working. But, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I think that's the key is to understand. I mean, it's it's one thing to sort of have these objectives. It's another to figure out what the what the the, the guardrails are in the construction of these things so they start to perform correctly. This is sort of the opposite of what's being what the goal is. The goal is to have um, an do active. Know, thing do you know why? Yeah. Do you know why it has these three things? I don't. Huh. So that would be worth looking at in in your text. Do you say anything like in your prompt? No, no. You, you don't say compare, reflect. No, no. no I don't. I, I specifically avoid sort of um, structural sort of five paragraph funnel formulas. You know, it's it's entirely about modeling examples. Um, you know. And and asking sort of asking it to sort of go back and think like a like a thoughtful coach, you know, who's going to simply sort of respond to something very specific. Like, here's an example. It sounds like you're thinking about emotional issues. What about that? You know, not like resolution, personal reflection. You can do this. You know, it's 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 anything but the canned um, formalism that goes with a lot of these responses in relation to writing it's interesting you know this is the opposite of mathematic tutoring you know where there's a right answer and there's obviously little hint structures that can guide people toward these open process writing can be just about anything you know wow where do i start yeah when yeah. i say um it 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 went on and on again um, <laughs> yeah they're going on and on again maybe do you think it has to be saying Make your responses no longer than a hundred words. I think you do. Yeah. Um, okay. But I, I think that the, and it's a, it's a chain of thought. Yeah. Uh, process. And, yep. but it's, but which is like a big title. It doesn't, <laughs> my understanding of that is that you just need to tell it, Hey, you're going to, you're going to get a complete answer, but only give me the first paragraph. Right. Or only give me the first part until I, until I tell you to do more. Right. right, and then and then you can tell me more. Yeah, that that's the key, I think. Yeah, so when you tell what, so in the creation, of, it's in the writing of this bot. This there the the order of operations, the specific step descriptions you're describing need to be written out specifically, right so up front. Here's how it's yeah. understand. Here's the slightly re, yeah, I think so. Here's the rephrase parallel excerpt for clarity. I don't. That's how I understood what you said about. Yeah. Parallel excerpt. Okay. okay. Oh, so it does the rephrasing. Oh, it does. Uh, it gives. It gives another version of the paragraph. Uh huh. Depending oh, okay. on these categories, which I don't know where these categories came from. Yeah, I don't either. It, it it obviously digested them and came up with that. How interesting. So we are now engineers. And because yeah, we're that's testing right. this thing, <laughs> so, Paul, can you stay on that? Um, those categories, oh, for sorry. A second? Uh -huh. okay. like for example, it would be interesting as a sort of as a thought project to, um, you know, so just right here. So, even like if the bot could say that it's going to come up with three angles, and here are three, right? Mm -hmm. And it said pick one and spend time with it, right? You know, like just looking at background and cultural expectations and developing a couple key questions about each, right, mm -hmm. would be much more useful than getting three different vectors for your response. As thorough and impressive as this is, it's overwhelming, right? And right. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't keep pace with the sort of slow design and the slow thinking process that people do as they come to their own understanding. It's just a lot to digest. Um. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is inspiring. Thanks for the mentor mode session here, Paul. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Um, let's just try one more thing. Can you start with just one of these? Right. Let's see how, if it's understanding conversation or not. Yeah. Background culture is an example parallel. Oh, so it shows one. Yeah. Mm, interesting. All right. I don't know. Um, 
parallel excerpt. Well, there it's, it's that's interesting. All right. All right. Uh, talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Paul. Yeah. Stay, hope you better for Have a good independent. Yeah, I, I think I'm almost there. How many days are you through? Tricks of, uh, tomorrow will be five. So, are you back slovening or no? I'm not. Okay. So the, the trick will be um, whether my wife Marcy gets it or not. So far, oh, not. So far, not. So, well, yeah. Hope so. She, hope she. Uh, <laughs> I didn't manage that here with Linda. So good luck. Yeah. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Ooh, uh, where is this? Um... Mm -hmm.